Hi, everybody. This is Denise to Webb coming back again um, with another video on the NIST Special Publication 850, Building an IT Security Awareness and Training Program. This is video number four in the series. This is part four um, of a series of five videos on implementing the IT Security Awareness and Training Program. Um, on this slide, I just want to show where we are. In part one, we talked about an intro to security awareness and training, and we talked about the components of awareness, training, and education. In part two, we did designing an awareness and training program. In part three, we talked about developing your IT security awareness and training material. And in part four, which is this video, we will talk about how to implement the awareness and training program. We'll talk about how to de develop your awareness material. No, that's the wrong slide. Okay, here we are. We'll talk about implementing the program, communicating the plan, techniques for delivering awareness material and techniques for delivering training material. And this will be a relatively short video. Okay, first of all, implementing an IT security awareness and training program. The program should be implemented only after you have conducted your needs assessments, developed your training program strategy, um, put together a plan for implementing that strategy, and developing your awareness and training material. And all of that was covered in the, the previous three videos. So these are the steps leading to program implementation. You start with conducting your needs assessment, developing your program strategy, developing your program plan for implementing the strategy, and developing your awareness and training material. Then you implement the program. And in the last video that I'll do, it will be about the post-implementation activities. So first up, communicating the plan. You want to uh, fully explain program implementation to the organization, ooh, to the organization to achieve buy-in. And so when you're communicating your plan, you want to include the expectations of both management and support staff, the expected results of the program. You want to talk about the benefits to the program, the roles and responsibilities, that one's very important, schedules, completion requirements, and you want to address any funding issues. For example, agency managers may know if the cost to implement the awareness and training program will be totally funded by the CIO or the IT security budget, or if their budgets are going to be impacted to cover their share of the expense of implementing the program. But when you're communicating, you want to make sure that, that all of that information is set out clearly so that everybody understands what to expect. The communication is going to depend on the program model. So if you have a centralized program model, partially decentralized or a completely decentralized program module model, the communication will, will reflect that. In a centralized program model, the CIO and or the IT security program manager will conduct a needs assessment and develop all agency IT security awareness and training policy, the strategy, the program plan, and the training and awareness material. Everything ha happens at a central location. The control and funding um, for material development and implementation is provided from a central area. The CIO and or the IT security program manager will brief the agency head and senior management on the implementation plan and get approval to communicate it throughout the agency. And of course, when we say agency, we're talking about federal agencies because NIST special publications are geared toward federal agencies. If you're in the private sector implementing this, then we're just talking about the business. In a centralized program model, you communicate the plan to unit managers providing the schedule for awareness and training offers, offerings, and then you allocate slots in each session for each business unit. The unit managers then communicate the plan to their staff. They identify the awareness and training required. They schedule attendees and they submit their nominations for each offering to the CIO or the IT security program manager as required. But again, this is how communication happens in a centralized program model. In a partially decentralized program model, the CIO and or the IT security program manager will conduct the needs assessment, 
develop the awareness and training policy, develop the awareness that <coughs> excuse me, develop the IT security awareness and training strategy, give the unit managers an awareness and training budget. Okay, so the assessments, the policy, the strategy, and the budget comes from the central office. And then the unit managers develop awareness and training plans for their own units. They implement the program, and then they provide status reports back to the CIO and or the IT security program manager. So policy strategy assessments, all of that happens at the central office, and then they pass down a budget. So each business unit gets a budget, and that business unit develops its own training plans. They implement the program, and they report back to the central office. Now, how does communication happen in a decentralized program model? In a decentralized program model, the CIO and or the IT security program manager, the central office, will disseminate broad policy and expectations regarding the IT security awareness and training program. The execution of the remainder of the program is the responsibility of the organizational units. So the central office will say, we're going to do IT security awareness and training. This is what we expect. This is our policy. They pass the policy down and then each business unit executes the remainder of the program, which means each unit will conduct a needs assessment, formulate a strategy, develop a training plan, develop awareness and training material, implement the awareness and training program, and then they will provide status reports back to the central office. Once the implementation plan has been explained to and accepted by, and that's important, and accepted by management, the implementation can begin. Now, there are a number of ways that awareness and training material and messages can be presented and disseminated throughout an organization. So here's some techniques for delivering awareness material. Many techniques exist to get an IT security awareness or a series of messages disseminated throughout an organization. The techniques chosen will depend upon resources and the complexity of the message. You want to make awareness material interesting and current, and I talked about that in an earlier video. And you want to repeat awareness messages and use a number of ways to present the same message. So you may send out a flyer, and then you may send out um, an email, and then you may put up a poster, and then you may make some key change that reinforce the message. And the message can be about phishing, email, acceptable use policy, it can be about social engineering, any awareness message. Um, I'll give you an example, an instructor-led session about avoiding being a victim of a social engineering attack can be reinforced with posters, periodic agency-wide email messages, and messages printed on awareness tools that are distributed to users. Other techniques for de delivering awareness material, you can have a single message, you can have more than one message, you can have inexpensive techniques, and then you can have more expensive techniques. That sounds so obvious, but um, it bears saying. So how do you deliver a single awareness message? You use awareness tools. And by that, I mean pens, key fobs, post-it notes, notepads, first aid kits, bookmarks, clocks, tchotchkes, anything that you can put a message on. Then you can use posters, again, delivering a single awareness message. You can have access lists, screen savers, warning banners, desk to desk alerts, agency wide email messages. You can have brown bag seminars or lunch and learns, is what we call them, and awards programs. Techniques for delivering several awareness messages at once include do and don't list newsletters, videotapes, web-based sessions, computer-based sessions, teleconferencing sessions, in-person instructor-led training, and brown bag seminars or lunch and learns. Some inexp inexpensive techniques for awareness messages includes messages on awareness tools, posters, access lists, do and don't list, checklists, screensavers, warning banners, desk-to-desk -desk alerts, agency-wide email messages, in-person instructor-led sessions, brown bag seminars, and rewards programs. 
Now, if you've got more of a budget and you want to do more expensive techniques for delivering awareness messages, you can do newsletters, videotapes, or DVDs. Um, we're kind of getting past that. Web-based sessions, computer-based sessions, and teleconferencing. Now, techniques for delivering training material. Um, some features of effective training material include ease of use. Training material has to be easy to access and easy to update and maintain. Scalability, meaning it can be used for various audience sizes and in many different locations. Accountability, for example, it captures and uses st statistics on the degree of completion. So you want to make sure that you're tracking who's taking what training. And effective training material has a broad base of industry support. And that would be adequate number of potential vendors, better, a better chance of finding follow-on support. So some techniques for delivering training material. Well, you could do interactive video training, web-based training, non-web, computer-based training, on-site instructor-led training, including peer presentations and mentoring. You can blend various training delivery techniques in one session. Uh, and this can be a very effective way to present material and to hold your audience's attention. For example, showing videos during an instructor-led training session allows the audience to focus on a different source of information. The video can also reinforce what the instructor has been presenting. In interactive video training, web-based training, and non-web computer-based computer training can also be used as part of an instructor-led training session. And that's it. That's what um, implementing a security awareness and training program entails. Uh, you want to communicate the plan. You want um, to think about the techniques that you're going to use to deliver your awareness material and to deliver your training material. Now, the last video in this series is going to be part five, where we talk about post implementation activities. It's going to be even shorter than this video. I want to say thank you so much for listening. I appreciate your time and attention. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments section. Um, you can reach out to me. I am available. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.